Hello everyone, and welcome back, after a long hiatus, to another drawing tutorial. Oh my god, it's been so long since I made the last one, and I, to be completely honest, it's half my fault. When I had time to make videos, I just didn't. And then when I wanted to make videos, I just didn't have any time. So, I mean, now, since we're all in self-quarantine, you know, practicing social distancing, another chance to make videos again. I'm gonna try and post a couple more um, before school comes back. If school comes back, uh, let's see how things pan out. So, what we're gonna be today, what we're gonna be doing today is drawing Joker from Persona 5. And without further ado, let's get started. As I always like to start things, I am going to start off with a circle. Because that is the basis of our heads. And think of it as the top of the skull. So, I'm going to quickly draw in a circle here. Like so. And this is going to be where we start off drawing Joker. So, we're going to draw a line of axis, the center of the head. Um, the way I'm going to draw him, from my reference, he's going to be in a kind of three-fourths angle looking at you from the side so the center of his face is the line we're about to put in to guide us and i'd say it's, it's about here so this is the center this will be the center of joker's face so all of his facial features will be around this point now we can put in the um the chin and the jaw of joker how we're going to do that is if this if this circle that we put in is the top of the skull, let me darken things a little so you can see better. If this circle that we put in is the top of the skull, then from the edges, the side, we're going to draw a line that kind of curves inwards towards our axis line. Curves inwards towards our axis line. And when you're a little below, like almost at the bottom, very bottom of the circle here, you're going to start curving, angling that line more inward towards the center of the face. So it's going to look something like this. We're going to get to the center, our axis line, or the center of his face. And we're going to curve the bottom because, you know, it's Joker. His character design was based off a of cat. So all the shapes are more triangular and feline. And when it's down here... We're going to pull the shape back up at a similar angle. And we'll pull the jaw back in. This time, don't go all the way to the edge of the um, edge of our skull. Because as you can see from a skull, the frontal plane of the face will be in front of the back of the head. So about over here, we're going to lean back in to where we were before, like we did here. So you're going to end up with a... You should end up with a face with a shape that vaguely resembles this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put in a line for the eyes. For the eyes, I'm going to say it's um the eye line is about relative to our circle. If this is the center of the circle, the, uh, the level of the eye should be about halfway between the center of the circle and the bottom of the circle. So like this about should be the level of our eyes in here. And for that, because the shape of a human face is curved, I am also going to have our axis line kind of curved. Think of it as you're drawing a sphere. I'm going to have our axis line also curve up at the same angle. So, something like that, mayhaps. And that'll be our line for drawing Joker's eye. Now, what we're going to do is, let's Put in the eye. We have this line to guide us. How we're going to do the eye, think of it, like I always like to say, an almond shape. But the artist for Persona 5, the eyes here. Let me, let me do the shape and I'll explain as we go. I'd say start the tip or the corner of the eye about, um, um, yeah, let's say about halfway from the circle. So if this our first circle if this is halfway in our original circle then over here is we're going to where we're going to start the corner of the eye of our of the character's left eye our right so you're going to start put a line angling upwards like this 
and then curve it back in. But remember, these should this should all be curved slightly upwards because of the angle our character is looking at. And then we're going to take that shape, draw a curved line back down. These should be straight, and this next line should be a little more curved than the rest. Curve it back down, and then back into our original shape over here. So that's the shape that we're making for Joker's eye. And we can do a similar thing on the other eye, but because it's on the other side and it's angled downwards, what happens is, because of perspective, the eye is going to get scrunched. So think if this was like a rubber plate. If you scrunch it, it's going to get slightly taller and it's going to get slightly narrower. So that's what we're going to do on the other side. Same thing, but a little smaller, a little narrower, and a little taller. It's the same basic shape though. Try and follow along with the shape. Because once you get the shape down, the rest of it should fall into place. So that it should look something like that. Again, this line that we drew for the level of the eyes should be uh, somewhere in between the eyes. I'd, I usually prefer to keep it um, below the eye when I draw the level. So the eyes kind of lie on top of our guideline over here. So that's his eyes. We can now put in the pupil, I mean the irises, or the actual eyeballs. And this is pretty simple. It should be um, towards the corner of the eye. Just draw a circle. If, if you're having trouble placing the eyeball correctly, just draw the whole circle like this, right? So you'd say that's where his full eye would be, right? And then what you can do is, here, let me take an eraser. You can erase the top. And there you have it. You have, sorry for the hair. Um, you have the eye where it should be. I'll do the same thing for the other side in the corner because he's kind of looking up that way. So in the corner, I'm going to draw a circle, right? And then we can erase this. And there you have it. We have our iris looking towards center perfectly. And when you have the circle, you can also put in the pupil if you, if that helps you. But for me, it's just enough to just, I can kind of make out where the pupil would be. Just like that, we have the eyes. Now, we don't really need to worry about doing much eyelashes or anything, because as you know, Joker wears a mask. So around this, he's going to have his little mask um, around it. English is difficult. Anyway, now we can start putting in the nose. For the nose, we can still using the original circle we drew near the bottom of the circle where the, the bottom of the circle intersects with our center line. This is where our nose is going to be. So for the nose, because it's at an angle, it's going to be real simple. I'm doing only two lines. One line that's that sort of curved shape going in and then when it reaches our center line, sorry, when it reaches our center line, it's going to curve back down. I don't know if you can see that. That shape. And we're going to do another line for this other nostril. And that's, that's all you need to do. You don't need to do anything else for the nose. It's finished. The mouth, similarly, is going to be, I'd say, about half, the upper lip should be about halfway down from the chin to the nose. So it's going to be a similar shape. And because it's a lip, Usually lips curve in a little. I'm going to try your best to follow along with the shape I make. But it should be something like that. And then we're going to put in the bottom lip, which, again, should be a little, like, I'd say one-third of the way down from the chin to here. So we have that. Eh. Yeah, that should work. Um... I, I don't know if that looks exactly how I want it to look. After we put in the mask, I'm going to make a final decision on the mouth. But something like that should be what we're kind of going for here. Now we do the fun part, which is putting in the mask. Now since the mask lies in front of the nose, if you thought of the nose as kind of the bridge of the nose curving that way, that's where the tip of the mask is going to be. If it's in front of the nose, we're going to make kind of a triangular shape over here and make sure this side of the triangle is 
narrower than this side. It's the same reason why the eyes are narrower. Because it's facing away from us, perspective is going to shrink that down. So if we drew a triangle here, it'd be this wide. But if we drew the same triangle over here, it's a little shorter because of the way, because of the way perspective works. And if we can put the center of the mask, this will help us frame the other eye and frame where the bridge of the nose would be. So put a straight line, angling kind of back, make it straight, and angle it towards the axis, the center of the face line we made. And about when it gets here, when it's, say, pupil level, we're going to curve it back out for the mask, like that. And let's put in the bottom of the mask over here. Let me erase some lines to make it more clear. Where we stopped over here, we're going to draw, make the line, make a subtle curve going back down towards the bottom of the page. And down here, we're going to take that line, and this is kind of how Joker's mask work. When you get a little outside of the side of his face, just make the line fairly straight out, just like so. And then we can just connect it to this other line we made. And yeah, that's basically his mask. And we're going to do pretty much the same thing on the other side, just a little more elongated because, again, because of perspective, this side of the face gets scrunched together and this side is wider and more um, normal size, you could say. So we're going to take this over, about over here by where the corner of his eye is. We're going to have it bend down. And this shape is going to almost follow the shape we made with his eyes. It's going to bend down. And about where in our eye, the bottom of the eyelid goes back up, in the same place, the bottom of the mask is going to go back up. Like that. And then we do the same thing. We're just going to connect it here. And we don't really have to worry about what's in the middle because all of that is going to get covered by Joker's hair, which is super mangy and curly if you've ever seen this character, which I'm assuming you have if you've clicked on this video. <laughs> what we're going to do with this mask now is we are going to... If you've ever seen Joker's mask, it has a black outline around the eye. So how we're going to do that, it's very simple. We're basically just following the shape of the eye again, but doing it bigger around it. So it's basically the same shape as the eye, but bigger. You get down here, though, you're going to pull it back up and make it a little more curved, kind of like a bird's beak. Curve it back in, following, again, the shape of the eye. Like that. Once you have this, Joker's mask, he actually has little uh, spike-like things. I don't know. It's weird to explain, but you'll see. What we're going to do now is... Sorry, I should have made this just a tad bigger. Just a smidge. Like that. He's going to have one little triangle pointing out this way. It's basically a triangle. Just make it a little more curvy. And one pointing about to where the mass starts curving in. We're going to have another spike that's a little bigger this time. And then the rest of the spikes are about as small as the first one we made over here. We're going to have one here and another here. And this will all be filled in black later. So that's the shape of Joker's mask. And we're going to do the same thing over here. But again, as I said before, because of perspective, it's going to be the same shape, but narrower. So again, we're going to pretty much trace the shape of his eye. And remember, you want to make it slightly bigger than the shape of his eye. As you can see, it's um, it should be coming out even more. For example, if this angle is a 30, this, the angle at the top of the mask over here should be like a 35, you know, just slightly angled higher up. Should I try to follow along with the shape. Go over here down here. Here we'd make the same shape, but remember, just a little narrower. And again, one over here, a bigger spike down here, and then two small spikes at the side, just like that. Just like that, we have 
pretty much his mask done, really. All of this will be filled in black. I'm going to ink this later, so you can see how that looks at the end when you, um, when I ink it. So once we have this shape, I'm going to erase some of our original lines to make it easier for you guys to see what's going on. Once we have this shape, we can start putting in the neck. I would have usually do this earlier, but <laughs> I kind of forgot. So the neck is going to follow the this with the original circle we made is our skull. The neck's just going to follow it. We put a line, which will be slightly behind the jaw, of course, because that's the back of the head. We're going to make a pretty much near straight line over there. And over here, this side of the neck will, let's say it's almost mirroring where we put the edge of the bottom lip. So over here is going to be the other side of the neck. And we're going to have this one curve a little in as well. Because that's kind of the style the author chose. And ooh, I almost forgot about the ear. Well, the ear is pretty simple. Most of it's going to get covered by hair anyway. But if you want to put it in, it would be somewhere around here. You know, following at the edge of where we made our line for the jaw is where the ear would be. So we've got this now we should put in the hair. So the hair, um, because of the volume of the hair, it's gonna be slightly above where we made the skull is where the hair will lie because the hair isn't exactly on the skull because he has so much hair. It's gonna create some volume between where the top of the skull, our circle is, and where your hair should be. So the hair, it's mangy. So let's say the center of the hair should be somewhere near. I put it a little to the um to the right of our axis line over here. We're gonna have one strand coming up. And it's really mangy, so just try and follow along. The curve should almost match the circular motion of the skull, but in the middle, they're just gonna be, you know, his hair's all messy and stuff, so they're gonna be just going out like that, make small triangular shapes like we did with our mask and just vary their sizes around. Here you can try and follow along, but really you can mostly kind of do whatever with the hair because it's so messy and like this, just make shapes around because his hair is so messy and, o messy. and over here, we're going to have one strand that kind of crosses over the corner of his jaw and that's to add a little bit more depth depth and also because his hair does slightly cover the sides of a is a mask like that so it's going like this you can have some stray hairs coming out over here again doesn't have to be in any particular order because his hair is supposed to be super messy in fact i may have made it a little too straight myself but you know just play around with it have fun there is no set rule because his hair is so messy. So we're going to do a similar thing over here. You're going to have these alternating curves. In the middle, you're going to have some hair going out, in. And again, make sure it's a uh, distance away from the side of the skull, our circle. Because he has so much hair, it's going to be in front of it. And moving. So we've got this, and when it gets down here, bring it closer to the neck, and his hair's still a little long at the sides, so you can have it kind of curve out this way. You can have some coming over his neck over here to add some weight. And at the sides of his ear, as, as I said, his ear's mostly going to get covered up with hair anyway. We're going to do a similar thing to the other side where we put some hair coming over the side of the... Um, of the jaw and most of it covering the ear and down here we're gonna he also has some hair going over his masks so to put that in it's gonna be try and follow the same it's the same triangular shapes we've been making out here just longer because it's longer strands of hair following following over his mask just it again doesn't have to be in any specific manner but make sure there's a larger volume of hair in the center of the mask 
and try and keep his eyes mostly clear. Because usually when we draw characters, one of the main things we want to see is the character's eyes. So the artist usually takes liberty to make sure the hair doesn't fall completely over the eyes, unless that's what they want. So we're going to get started with that. Have a strand coming over here. Another strand going down here. Doing mine similar to the reference. Another strand, make sure they kind of alternate. We're using the same kind of S curves, C curves shapes we're making here to make these strands. Have another strand going up this way. You know, just kind of have fun with it. It's like Bob Ross says, happy little trees, same thing as happy little follicles of hair. That sounds kind of weird, but you get what I mean. And for, for this hair, I'm going to have mine kind of curling around the eye like this. So it's not actually covering it, but it's kind of going over it. Here, let me make it a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. And you know, just kind of have fun with it. Have the hair kind of flow around everywhere. Like a bunch up in places. Gather in strands in places. And most of this is going to get covered with black anyway, but there's no harm in putting in some lines for hair coming and make sure most of the hair comes out from the center because this is kind of the center where all the hair is going to come out from so i'm going to put a few more lines here showing that his hair has a little more depth to it you know it's not just completely flat and once you have this here let me make it a little clearer so you can see where the eye was because i think that part's lightened up a little in that image like this this is just for you guys. Yep. And we can put in the sides of his coat and stuff. We're almost done with the drawing here. I'm going to ink it later, which if it looks a little weird, that's because his head is tilted a little to the side here. In fact, what I'm going to do... To help the illusion a little, I am going to just take the mouth and kind of also have it f follow the same angle as the eye line. To know, it's, it's just going to help a little with, um, I'd say, the illusion of his head being slightly tilted to the side. Like that. Yeah, I like that a little better. Don't you? And here. Let me erase the mask around here because that's all hair covering up the mask. And for, oh yeah, as I said, the coat. So for the coat, it's, um, doesn't have to be in any particular specific manner, but over here, I'd say maybe a little lower than the side where the side of the hair came in. We're going to have a line going down like this and just subtly curving back out, you know, because that's kind of the side of his, um, that's the side of his coat. And when it curves back out, we are have it curve back in and make this kind of V shape because it's going back to the center. And really, that's about the drawing. On his neck, he's got um, a specific shape of, I don't know, it's kind of the undershirt he wears. So this is going to be the center of it. And then you're going to have kind of this triangle facing outward. And when it comes out, about, I'd say, to where this spike we made was, curve back in, down, and then go back this way. And this is just kind of the undershirt he wears. And that's really a majority of the drawing aspect of it done. You can, if you want, do some more things. What I'm going to do now, though, is... I'm going to go straight into the um, inking here. Let me just do the shoulder. It's going to be a little lower than the neck. Just try and follow along. And when it gets to a little less than how far the side of his trench coat or whatever came out, it's going to go back in. Just like that. Again, not too crazy. I'm not worried about the rest of his body too much. The main tutorial is for the face, so that part is mostly finished. What we're going to do now is I am going to ink this so that you can see the lines better, which might help you with your drawing, because I know because I did a pencil sketch, it's not as clear exactly what I did. I'm going to ink it and probably color it, 
and we'll go from there. Peace. Guys, I'm going to call this drawing done for now here. I think it turned out alright. As you can see, I did go back, fix some things like which I didn't really like that much, like the mouth. I made the neck a little narrower over here. You know, just small fixes. Uh, you know, I'd always recommend that you use a reference to make sure that, um, you know, you get the proportions and everything completely accurate. Uh, so yeah, I think this is not that bad. Something that happened when I was coloring, though, I actually wanted to start practicing using my uh, G-Pen. So I used my G-Pen nib here to ink it, but I'm not used to inking with the G-Pen yet, which is why I want to practice it. Didn't turn out quite as I expected, but that's all right. The problem, though, was the ink I used. I didn't think that it was going to um, bleed too much with markers, but it did, especially in the skin area. I don't know if you can see it, but as you can see, the ink kind of got smeared by the marker, which uh, wasn't quite the outcome I was expecting, but that's fine. You know, you do and you learn. So next time I'll know not to use this ink for markers. But uh, yeah, this has been my tutorial on how to draw Joker. I promise I'll try to make more since I'm in my break right now. And I hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys learned something today. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time.